This is a pre-course video for the Difficult Vascular Access in Children course. Today I'll be talking about midlines. My name is Sean O'Donnell. I'm a paediatric surgery registrar working in the Royal Belfast Hospital for Sick Children. Today we will talk through what a midline is, how the Seldinger technique is used and how these lines are inserted and secured. I will demonstrate midline insertion, problems with midlines, and where to find more information. I often tell parents that the midline is an extra long cannula that can stay in the vein for much longer and will lead to fewer attempts at cannulation. I phrase this to children as a plastic straw for their medicine. The midline may be a single or double lumen catheter depending on the patient's need. To insert a midline you will need standard cannulation equipment including tourniquet, topical anaesthetic agents, skin wipes, means to secure the device, a flush and connector, and of course a midline. You can use a cannula or the needle that comes in the midline set. They are straightforward to insert and look after and patients may be able to go home with the midline in place. It's often possible to take blood samples from midlines, though this gets more difficult the longer and narrower the line is. Here is a midline set. This line is a 22 gauge Vigon Lederflex line with a 0.46 millimeter diameter soft tipped guide wire. Here is the line and the lumen at the end. Here are the wings to help secure the line to skin. These holes are in case a suture is required. Here is the clamp and here is the hub for a connector to attach. Sven Ivar Seldinger was a Swedish radiologist who published the technique in 1953 for percutaneous access to blood vessels and other hollow organs using a flexible wire. We now use the Seldinger technique for all central line insertions, arterial lines, many abdominal and thoracic drains, as well as a multitude of feeding tubes. For tips on entering the blood vessel, see Dr. Beamer's DVAC video. Step A. A hollow needle is in the vessel lumen. If this was pushed too far, then it can be withdrawn until flashback is present. If you are taking blood samples from the patient, I'd advise taking those at this point. Step B. Either remove the needle from the cannula, or if using a needle alone, then hold this very steady and insert the floppy tipped guide wire that comes in the pack with the midline. This should pass the tip of the needle easily and smoothly glide up the vein. If it's not passing the end of the needle or cannula, then the tip is most likely not in the lumen. If the wire is in the blood vessel but doesn't advance easily, try spinning it around gently. Sometimes the flexible end um, gets caught on the vessel wall and just needs coaxed back towards the centre. Step C. Remove the needle or cannula whilst holding the wire in place. It's best to keep a hold of this so it doesn't get lost at this point. Step D. Pass the new catheter over the wire. Ensure the wire is being held at all times and doesn't get lost into the vessel. Ensure the line is flushed beforehand. This will reduce friction with the wire. This step is often very tricky when trying to get it past the skin as the fascia can be tight. It may require some pressure and manipulation to get our midline into the vessel. Then it should advance up the vein easily. Step E. Remove the guide wire, then ensure it aspirates and flushes well. Your hospital may already have guidance for insertion of lines or a vascular access team with helpful information and protocols. There will be different lines and equipment in every institute, so familiarise yourself. Following parental discussion, identify a straight vein. Midlines are a bit fiddly, so you often need an extra assistant to help hold the distal limb. Gather equipment, use your topical analgesia, clean the skin and enter the vein, using a cannula or venflon, or the needle that comes with the midline kit. 
Once the line is in place, it's important to secure it properly. Ensure it's flushed, discard sharps appropriately, document the insertion, and ensure the parents are happy. The line can be used right away, and it may be appropriate to commence medications or a fluid bolus before it's fully secured. To secure the midline in place, it may be appropriate to suture it, for example if the insertion is in theatre under anaesthetic. Otherwise I would use a grip lock and a tegaderm, or two teddy bear dressings together. A grip lock is a securement device that lies quite flat and is unlikely to get dislodged. It's extremely adhesive to the skin and the catheter and protects the skin from the pressure of the plastic. I will now show you how I enter the vessel, use the Seldinger technique and secure the line. I have opened my midline, separated the guide wire and flushed the line. I will have prepared the patient, parent and equipment and selected a good vein in advance. I make sure the skin has had adequate topical anaesthetic and has been cleaned. Here I am entering the vessel using a cannula. I remove my needle and place it in a sharps bin. The cannula should bleed back freely. This is the best time to take bloods if they are required. I place the guide wire that came with the kit into the cannula. Once I feel this moving freely up the blood vessel, I can remove the cannula. I then place the midline onto the end of the guide wire and slide this up towards the skin. I ensure the guide wire is sticking out of the end of the line so it won't get lost into the vessel. I place some tension on the skin to help pass the line through the fascia into the vessel. I advance the line up the vein. When I'm happy, I remove the guide wire and place a pre-flushed connector onto the line. I clean and dry the surrounding skin. In this case, I'll use two teddy bear dressings back to back for securing the line. Aspirate and flush the line then clamp it, place a bandage and document the insertion. There are very few problems associated with midlines. It is possible to lose the guide wire into the vein and that would require interventional radiology or vascular surgeons to remove it. It's possible that a vein may not be used again for some time after a midline has been inserted into it, especially if there's signs of phlebitis of the vein or cellulitis at the skin. Any indwelling device in a blood vessel increases the risk of thrombus formation. So it's important to watch out for distal limb swelling or signs of pulmonary embolism. They cannot be submerged, but they may remain in place up to four weeks. To reduce the risks, it is important to ensure adequate training in these prior to using them on a patient. I would recommend familiarizing yourself with, with midline kits, talk through and practice the steps. Insert some lines under supervision before attempting any by yourself. The Vigon website has a multitude of resources including documents and videos as well as vein boards for practicing the skill. There are many other companies with information and papers online for your own reading. Today we have discussed the basics of midlines how the Seldinger technique is used and how these lines are inserted and secured. I've demonstrated my insertion technique. We 
We talked about problems with midlines and where to find more information. Here are some references. Thank you for listening.